What's up, Rockstars? Today I have a mega list for you. This is going to be the biggest video I've done in months. It's huge, it's massive. We're going to be covering so many different things. There's a ton of fun to be had here, a ton of good stuff to look at. So let's get to it. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate the videos I make every single week for you guys, and you can give even a dollar a month, there's a link in the description below. Thank you so much. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss kind of the history of this. So I actually have a Facebook group. It's not for my channel, it's for the community, but I uh, kind of propped it up and set it up. It's called the Board Game Kingdom. There's a link to that in the description below. Feel free to join. But I proposed... Uh, that I needed help and I needed to know what your guys' favorite crowdfunded board game companies were. And that's because, again, this is for you guys. This is driven by you guys so that you guys can share all this wonderful knowledge. I don't know everything. You guys know a ton, especially all of you together. And this went extremely well. 98 different comments listing a whole bunch of different things. Plus people reached on Discord and email and all sorts of other places. So we have a ton of games that you guys listed here. There is no particular order and I am more familiar with some of these companies and others and I won't pretend to like be um, um, knowledgeable in every single facet here but suffice it to say if you see uh, a company on here chances are you're going to enjoy backing one of their games when it comes to the backing experience whether that's delivery or customer service or accommodation or respectfulness or prices or shipping or anything like that you guys give me all this information about how these companies did all these wonderful things or just made a quality product on time even that can get you on this list because kind of the world we live in when it comes to the board games. There's a lot of a lot of scope increase that you can have there and stuff like that that can kind of get in the way of just getting good games to people. So without further ado, no specific uh, order, let's dive in. Okay. Oh, and if you, if you see your company on here, mad props. If you see something you don't agree with, let us know in the comments below. Again, I didn't vet all of these. I was a little selective in some instances, but otherwise, it's pretty much exactly what you guys suggested. And additionally, if there's something I missed, let me know what great board game company you had experience with and why, because then I can share that with others. So that's kind of the whole point is the shared knowledge uh, base here that we have. So starting things out with Mythwin, this is by Oom Games, O-O-M-M Games. Uh, they have made some really nice stuff. They're delivering stars of uh, Akiros. So I, I, I don't know how to say the last word, but they're delivering that now and people are already really excited about that. Mythwin though looked beautiful. I remember covering this a couple times when it was live and it did extremely well. Quality games right there. That's what it seems like to me. Now, we also have Cardboard Alchemy. They did the Flamecraft. I was so tempted to get this one because my kids would love it. I ended up not doing it. I just had a whole bunch of other stuff. My It's already over budget. I try to budget what I'm spending uh, accordingly based off the, the funding I get through Patreon so that I can, I can stay pretty independent with that. And so there is a limit. You know, everybody has a limit. Nobody can back everything. But uh, this one didn't quite get it there. But it looks great. And I'm glad people are excited for it. And Cardboard Alchemy seems to be a great company to make it. All right, next up we have Kingdoms Forlorn from Into the Unknown. They have delivered a few uh, miniature things. And they are about to deliver Aeon Trespass Odyssey. This is one where, because they haven't technically delivered Aeon Trespass, I almost removed it. However, they have delivered a few other things, and those have been uh, quality, and people seem to like it. And they've been very communicative, uh, communicative in how they're doing when it comes to Aeon Trespass Odyssey, stuff like that. So excited to see them uh, come come out with that game. Next up, we have Chip Theory Games. They do everything great, it seems. They are really, really good at making super high quality games at a really great price and uh, just respecting their, their, their customers. And it's amazing how all three of those are a, 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 give you success. 
a great product, great price, and respect for the customer. Those are the three things you really need. Everything else is kind of follow suits, right? Communication that follows from the respect, right? Um, you know, uh, your, your, your pledge tiers, all that, all that comes from the respect. It's great to see really good quality work rewarded. So chip theory games are pretty much always on uh, any kind of list like this. Um, I'm sure this is not unique here. And they, again, they, they're, they, they do quite well for themselves. All right, next up we have Panic Roll for Townsfolk Tussle. Talk about an indie game done right. There's really just three of them that are uh, doing all this, so I'm sure they have other workers from other other areas and fields to kind of help along the way. But seriously, they did a great job when it came to controlling the scope and making a great and unique looking and feeling game. It was a new take on the boss battler, which was really kind of cool and a totally unique theme, kind of like a cuphead kind of thing. And again, good communication, and at the end, they got a quality product at about the right time. So it's wonderful to see that make the list, and they have like th uh, another three expansions coming out here soon, I believe. All right, next up, we have Awakened Realms. Guys, if you didn't think you would see Awakened Realms in this, you were, I don't know what you were smoking, because <laughs> of course they're on this. Really good quality products, fair prices, big games, Lots of community interaction. They do a lot of votes and stuff like that. Um, uh, good communication. Look, all around, they do, they structure a campaign really well. In fact, they're running campaigns for other companies at this point. They do so well at it. So overall, a wonderful experience if you back a taint, uh, oh, not, not just Tainted Grail, but a uh, Awakened Realms game. They do quality work when it comes to these campaigns, and you will enjoy your time there. I pretty much guarantee it. All right, next up we have... Kayenta Games. Uh, they've done two of these kind of upstairs, downstairs, and an obsession expansion. I forget what the other obsession one was. It's like the main one here. But from what I understand, they do great work here. So mad props to getting to this list. They were actually mentioned a couple times by some of you. So uh, suffice it to say that people are happy with their experience with this company. So if you see them pop up again, maybe give them a shot. Next up, we have Thunderwork Games. They do the role player series, and they have gained thousands of fans and made a whole lot of money doing great work that people love to see. So it's really nice to see the company again making quality products and then investing in their IP, investing in their game systems. So you feel as the customer invested as well. It's not just a one and done thing and then they're never going to talk to you again. And so they're constantly reinvesting in that. And I think that's awesome. All right, next we have Mind Clash Games. They actually have a campaign right here live. Any live campaigns, I'm going to go in and link it down to in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And Mind Clash Games was mentioned one of the most times, I think at least four or five times, maybe even more. Seriously, they have a ton of fans out there and they've done a lot of really good work. So they did, for instance, Perseverance, which did well. They did Voidfall that did really well. They have made a name for themselves just doing high quality work for those people that really like that style of game. Um, sometimes it can be a little heavy, but not always. And I think that's really cool that they have a, it seems that they have a good variety of products, but either way, backing one of their campaigns is pretty much always a joy. Next up, we have The City of Games. This is Frank West's doing where he did, for instance, Isle of Cats. And the moment you put cats in there and then the kind of like Tetris shapes and all that kind of stuff, people just go bananas. It's like, it's really, really fun. Just seeing this game makes me smile. And it sounds like backing the campaign can make you smile too because many of you guys mentioned this one as well. So props to them for running a wonderful campaign system for backers. All right, next up we have AEG. Now they do a ton of work well as well. They are uh, big in retail, but they also do a lot of campaigns, specifically into certain systems they have like the Thunderstone Quest. And again, it's one of those things where they're reinvesting in their IP, they're reinvesting in the game system. So if you like it, you keep getting more new fun things from a company that seems to run a good campaign as well, which is awesome to experience because there's kind of this melding between the backer and the people making the things where it's like, they are obviously happy with what they're getting and they're obviously really good at delivering. And you pair those two together and you get these kind of repeated success stories like that. So really great to see them doing well in the crowdfunding space also. Now, Roxley here has been hitting it out of the park. They have a live campaign right now for Skyrise. Link in the down below in the description for that, obviously. Beautiful looking game. It looks simple and streamlined, but yet nuanced and complex at the same time. And I love that kind of... Um, not, 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 you know, like it's, it's not an oxymoron, right? But it, it's like, 
it seems simple and it's easy to understand, but then when you play it, it's really nuanced. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate some table presence and my goodness, does this look good. So high quality games from a company that people love to back things with. What is there to lose? That sounds awesome. Okay, next up we have Dragori Games. They were mentioned several times. They delivered Arena and now Arena again the second time with improved miniatures and stuff like that. They are one of the few companies when I did a review, they asked me specifically, okay, let's talk about your negatives. And also, do you have any others you didn't listen? Because they want feedback. They want to improve their game and make it wonderful. That's the kind of developers they are. And I think people are seeing that as they play Arena and get to experience that. And then when Teneris comes, almost Arena 2.0, and then the RPG and stuff like that, I think they're going to see a lovely system. But either way, it's obviously a company that has their head on straight and knows what they want to do, and that's make a quality product. And if that's your main goal with the money being second, who am I to complain? Next up, we have Mythic Games. Now, this one was kind of flip-flopping on whether or not I'd include it or not. It was mentioned several times and I ultimately included it because at the end of the day, they do run very well done campaigns, almost always. Um, they're they're a joy to have and they're very communicative. They do a lot of videos and live streams, so it can be hard to like search for stuff if you're just looking for the past. But if you're following along, they definitely keep you up to date on their information. They have a Discord where they're very active in there. They're active in the comments, in the updates, online, and they make some great quality games. Now, they might be a little late, but when you get them, they're fantastic. So Mythic Games is something obviously to pay attention to pretty much always. Now, I don't know what their future holds for uh, them being crowdfunded. So I guess we'll see around that and kind of what path they take as a company and, and, and how they kind of adjust in these turbulent times. But either way, traditionally, they earned their spot here, I think, and many of you mentioned them as well. And of course, Monolith. Monolith does really great pricing, uh, really great product. They do Conan, they do Batman, they do Mythic Battles Pantheon, they do Claustrophobia. They do a lot of really cool stuff, great quality games, great quality game play, and uh, they listen to their backers and stuff like that and try to improve, and they invest and reinvest in their IPs, in their game systems, so that you can feel invested as well and slowly gain more and more. This is what season three of Batman, as they make it solo and co-op and add these different features and stuff like that. They're not trying to just get a ton of money out of you. They're not, you know, propping up a whole bunch of scope or anything like that. It's actually kind of moderate, which is kind of surprising. And they always do votes for customers on what they want to, to see in the pledge manager so that they're making the product that you want. And I think that's really cool. And the price is great. Like I said, I think they do typically very well, especially in the shipping department, but overall just a quality, quality uh, company that is trying their best to make good games for you. All right, next up we have Orange Nebula, another group of passionate gamers making games, and people love it. This did very well. In fact, it came back again, and it did very well again, and people just can't get enough of it, and they love it. I may not agree with how they pitch their games every so often based off of um, uh, just what I want to see out of things, but they are definitely passionate and nobody can take that from them and commutative and support the community and it's just wonderful to see again great game quality product melded with backers that are happy what's what's to lose nothing that's what's to lose okay next up le boy de Joux. i'm sure i'm saying that wrong my apologies i am so sorry i can barely speak english you'll forgive me if i try to say anything other than english uh they did malhe neck or last but they did a whole bunch of other great stuff uh they actually did clash of rage which is one of my favorite games that i never play and because i never played i ended up giving it back thankfully to a patron so that they can then experience it and, and hopefully enjoy it much more than I did because they can actually enjoy it. But fantastic work on that game there. Malier looks really, really cool. It went through a lot of iterative processes there. And suffice it to say, they have a cult following and it's no wonder. Letter Games, Leader Games, I apologize if I'm saying the last name wrong. It's actually by Patrick Leader, or Letter again, my apologies. And he has a huge cult following, again, making quality games that people love. So really excited to see that on here. Again, mentioned multiple times by you guys, multiple times. 
Okay, next up we have Shadowborn Games. They are finally delivering Oathsworn. Yes, I don't have my copy though, no. Uh, but I'm excited when I finally do get it. They do some really good quality work and it's very commendable that they stuck to it, that they have the scope, that they have the scale that they have when it comes to the story, when it comes to the miniatures, when it comes to just the game at large, but they're investing in their IP. They're investing in their world, in their game, and we will see more, including a second print, Link down below to that. Next up is Nemesis.games or Nemesis Games. Now, disclaimer here, uh, I helped with this campaign a little bit uh, when it comes to the structure and the message and the layout and a, a whole slew of other things, the images, all of that. So uh, all of that was paid for. However, you guys mentioned it, not me. So here it is. And I do stand by any statements I make when it comes to the quality of it. If you have any questions about the quality, ask somebody who has it and they will let you know how premium and nice quality this game is from an indie developer who then explodes. They did a small game. They funded it. They delivered. It was fantastic. They deliver more. And guess what? It explodes almost 700,000. Uh, it goes to show that quality work breeds success. That's how that works. Next up, we have Board Game Inc. They did Fractal Beyond the Void. I had a ton of fun with this. It actually it still is one of my standout gaming experiences. And suffice it to say, they are working on doing things a little different. So they're adding a lot more narrative and stuff like that into a 4X game. And they're making it streamlined instead of like some six hour slog. And they're doing all this other kind of stuff, which is just really cool to see. Overall, very excited to see their success and happy that other people are happy as well. Next up, we have Grebo Games. They do a lot of different uh, factions for like Blood Bowl and stuff like that. These are the Chaos Dwarves that they do. People are, again are very happy with this and, I, and they look quality. And I think that's wonderful that again, people are getting a good product repeatedly. They've done quite a few of these actually, which is really cool. So if you're into that, definitely check them out. Sleeping Gods, this is by Red Raven Games. And again, they were listed multiple times very, very passionate uh, fan base. Started on Kickstarter, went to GameFound, saw success in both places, which goes to show that it's not the platform, it's what you make. All right, now this one I don't know how to say. Is it Grap Hill or is it Grafil? I wanna say Grafil Games. It looks like it has a bird symbol. Maybe that's a type of bird that I'm just ignorant of. Then that could very well be. They have a consistent art style when it comes to a lot of these things. And I think it looks beautiful. This is a game where, again, it just looks so pretty to look at and people are happy with it. So they do well, that's how that works. Next up, we have Matagot. They did Yucatan, uh, late, that was like the last one. And uh, th they did Kimmet. They're doing all these like big name things from big name designers that people are enjoying and they're happy with. And that's wonderful. Next up, we have Pulp Alley, a super indie thing that was mentioned, but they said that they did a great job. It was quality work and delivered on time, all those things, everything that you want. So if they make a game that looks interesting to you, you can be sure that it'll be a pleasant experience. And from an indie developer, nonetheless. Nonetheless, next up we have Road to Infamy. Now they have a current uh, campaign right now, Globe Trotting, but they do a lot of variety of different games. I mean, look at this thing, you're drawing on a globe. So they have a wide variety of different types of games, which I think is great. It means the creative juices are flowing and people take notice. Next up, of course, Cell 4 Games with Frosthaven and Gloomhaven. Look, he makes things that explode. He did a very good job making a game that tons of people love, and he was smart about it as a business, and he's been rewarded for it, and I think that's awesome. And continuing to reap the benefits of that passion and of that investment, super cool to see. Next up, we have Ares Games. Now, they, the last thing they did was Orconomics, but they did a lot of other really cool games also, and I honestly thought this one looked fun too. So <laughs> they do, again, on a wide variety of games. I mean, you, trust me, you haven't necessarily seen a game quite like this, and I really dig that. They also do the sword and sorcery games, which tons of people adore. They're going to be doing that with the Teberu system next, I believe, which sounds super neat. All right, next up we have All Aboard Games. They are doing things way different. So they do 18xx games for the most part, but they do these different things where they send waves of them out and they include errata and, and all this other kind of stuff to improve those games and you can get them all at once. So that's super neat that they're doing that for their fan base. I think that's a great thing to do. And uh, just, uh, it's a neat thing, I think, for these kind of style games because they're not like super expensive or anything like that. So you can kind of group them in and just get them in waves, which is kind of neat. And uh, it probably helps with the 
price as well, I think. All right, next up we have Eagle Griffin Games. They are having the Bot Factory on right now, but again, only 43 hours ago at time of recording. So it's like super late game there. So I'll get a link down below. Feel free to check it out, but it might already be too late. If you missed the video, maybe you should be subscribed and then you could see videos as they go live. Just saying, it's a thing. Next up we have Sky Kingdom Games, another one where people very much enjoyed this. This is their latest one. Um, what you guys might know it more of is the Isafarian Guard, which was huge for my my viewer base. You guys loved that game. It was the one that had two minis on one base, and it was kind of like a paired thing throughout the whole thing, uh, the whole game, which is super interesting and again unique and different. But then they come out with this kind of thing, and again, different look, different game style. I think that's really cool that their 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 creative juices are flowing. Okay, next up we have Far Off Games. Look, they have done a wonderful job with this. Uh, they, they did Zia, they did Aridia, Aridia, um, which is super neat. Um, I like it because it has Ridia in it, which is a Final Fantasy character. But anyway, besides that, <laughs> um, quality to quality gameplay. Pre-painted minis with uh, changing heads and stuff like that. They're trying new things. Very much an exploration style game where you're uncovering secrets and doing stuff like that. Looks super cool. And so did, and a lot of people agreed with that. So, and... And obviously he's made a name for himself, which helps too. All right, next up, Lucky Duck Games. Again, consistent work when it comes to delivering what people want. While I found the quality of something like Kingdom Rush a little lackluster, that's because I'm used to more of the premium Kickstarter stuff and they do stuff that also works really well in the mass market and retail. But they've been doing app-based stuff as well and people love their stuff there. They've been doing some detective ones. They have the Dark Quarter here now set in like New Orleans and it's again more detective work there, app-driven and people again are loving that. So they're doing a good job there uh, making games people want. That's all you got to do in the end of the day. All right, next up we have Skybound Games. They are they are best known lately for something like Valor and Villainy, though I knew them even from the Super Fight and stuff like that. But either way, people enjoyed this so much they were able to come out with another expansion and get that. And again, people have enjoyed the experience or it wouldn't be on this list. Restoration Games. Look, all you got to look at is Unmatched, but they have done so many high quality games people have enjoyed their systems for years later. There are all those kind of companies that make a big splash on the Kickstarter scene and they make a crowdfunded game. They deliver it. People are hyped when it delivers and you never hear from it again. I have yet to have that experience with Restoration Games. People are continually talking about their games and that's how much fun they are. And again, quality product, quality game. You get repeated customers. That's how that works. Next up, we have Rock Manor Games. They do some beautiful games. I mean, look at that art. I love it. It's very comic book style here for Seas of Havoc. And I, that's what drew me into it anyway, what first caught my eye. But obviously they're doing something else, right? If they were on this list, you guys mentioned them because you had a great experience with them. And that's wonderful. Next up is Broken Mill, another indie game. They've only done a few of these, but again, they're investing in their IP. They're interacting with their community. They're respecting their community. And so people have great times with it. And I think that's awesome. And while I say indie because they're only making like 36,000, something like that, they still have over a thousand backers. It's just, it's, it's just a deck box. So it's cheap. So you don't get those high numbers that everybody looks at, but it doesn't mean there's not a lot of people there loving what they make. And that's really, really great to see. All right, next up, we have Fantasia Games. They are new. They did Endless Winter. It looks amazing. I can't wait to see what they do next. They made a list on, I think, two of you guys actually. And so that says something. Next up, we have Sinchi and Cow Games. This game came out, Secret Unknown Stuff, a while back. Hilarious. It still cracks me up. They are coming out with another version here soon, and people have loved their experience with this one, enough to mention it, and so obviously we should all pay attention to what they do next. It sounds like maybe the start of something great. Stronghold Games, of course, they do stuff like the Ares Expedition expansion. This was to their terraforming Mars game that is adored by thousands and thousands of people around the world. I mean, they do some quality stuff and they've been focusing on adding gameplay. They've been focusing on pimping it out and adding deluxification and just making that experience that you love with it even better. So they're taking what people already love, making it better. Nothing wrong with that. Next up, we have Succubus Publishing. They did Madara, and they went above and beyond what almost any dev does when it comes to delivering their game. They got so un underfunded based off of the actual uh, cost of producing such a big game like Madara, but they stuck to it for years and got it out and then was well rewarded with a huge campaign 
for more. And that's just great. They're constantly improving the rule book and, uh, and uh, interacting with the community and doing uh, community events and uh, showing off different things that they do and just overall releasing a ton of story and lore and art and it's great to see. Uh, very excited for that. I believe their pledge manager is still open. I'll link down to that below. But uh, only until like the very early July, I believe. So uh, yeah, step on that if you want any of the Madara stuff. Next up, we have Colossal Games. Again, a fan favorite. Many of you guys mentioned them. They do great work, obviously. And uh, yeah, plus Western games. And I don't think there's enough of that. I'm surprised there's as few as there are, I feel. All right, next up we have Sirlin Games. This is by David, and again, he has pretty much a cult following at this point. He's done a lot of games. They're a fan favorite where people continue to come get them, and they do new and unique stuff. I remember seeing Puzzle Strike 2 here because I remember the little magical wand and how much my kids would like that and love the bright colors and the just just how the, the overall look and feel of the game looks like a lot of fun. So again, doing quality work and uh, definitely reaping the benefits of that. Congrats on making the list. Next up we have Brotherwise Games. They did Castle of the see lately but you might also remember them from their call to adventure one i was actually really giddy about i think they looked super cool they did overboss they've done a lot of games that have delivered have done well at retail have had people enjoy them for years now at this point and so uh yeah they're reaping what they're sowing and that's quality by the looks of it next up we have mighty boards they did hamlet i almost backed this um it, it I, on pc i play games just like this so i really like this and i think that's super cool but they've done other stuff completely completely different from Hamlet. And I think it's great to see them uh, kind of branching out and doing different types of games, not just sticking to one genre even, so that people can enjoy their 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 creativity abroad. And I think that's super neat to do. And again, almost 10,000 backers. I'm sure that went up in a pledge manager, not down. Next up, we have Gambling Games. They do the Tiny Epic series. They did Tiny Epic Dungeons, which exploded with like over 40,000 backers. But they have had people that have backed every single game they've made. Now, not all of them are the highest quality. For instance, I got Tactics, it was eh, but Others I've heard are fantastic. So, it, it, but either way, they're investing in it. And guess what? They're small, which means they ship cheap, which means they're not expensive. But yet there's more game packed into those than some other big box ones even that are all about the mini. So super cool to see that. And I'm glad they're doing well. I heard this was pretty much tiny epic blood rage. So there you go with that. <laughs> Next up, we have Ivy Studio. Again, super duper great on community outreach. Like that is their bread and butter. They do great with that, but they make some gorgeous games too. As you can see, something like Veiled Fate instantly draws the eye and gets them noticed. I feel they look, uh, it just looks wonderful. All right, next up, Dice Throne. I mean, come on guys. Dice Throne is super popular. There are people that play it still to this day. Again, it's not one of those one and done games and they not only invested in it, but they got the Marvel license as well. Are you kidding? Yeah, this did really well, of course. A great game that people like paired with a wonderful IP. What could you ask for more? Uh, that is seriously uh, a great move on their part, and everybody was happy for it. Mantic Games made the list, too. They uh, have done a really good job with Hellboy and delivering that and reinvesting in that and having uh, the interactions with the community there. They now have Umbrella Academy. It didn't do nearly as well as Hellboy, but that might be more IP-based than not because it sounds like the company is certainly doing their best. So uh, congrats on making the list as well. All right, next up, we have World Forge Games. We're doing stuff like this no man's land thing here which again just looks beautiful i don't know too much about them so i won't speak too much about them except to say that i love the aesthetic of it and i'm glad to see that people are enjoying themselves in fact over 2,000 backers on this one which is again great to see and so firelock games they did this blood and plunder game that looks a uh, beautiful beautiful and i love these kind of really passion projects which is what i would call this as where it's like yeah you can make a game or you could make something that's like ridiculous and that's what they're doing here. And I think people have been enjoying that, hence why they're on the list. All right, next up we have Themeborn, which is a great name for a company, doing Escape to Dark Sector. There are some patrons of mine that die for this stuff. It looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I love the art style. If you were a fan of this kind of stuff in the 80s, this is your jam. And I got another game coming for that as well, or another company doing stuff for that. In fact, let's go ahead to Mayhir Sigrillo. He is doing stuff like Cryptic Explorers, which, again, he delivered on such a small budget that it, it, it's just, it, it's fantastic to see. 
one of the best and most interesting looking games in my opinion because it's so unique and so different and hits that theme it wants great but then it looks like a fantastic game wrapped in this theme that not everybody will love and i love that it's what kickstarter is for for creating these niche games that there's a market for it. and there obviously is they funded it they made it and that's wonderful to see i cannot wait to see what comes next uh i will probably get it i don't know if i could pass it up i i cryptic explorer is one of the big ones i i think i missed next up we have lion wing they do a lot of anime based stuff their latest one here was made night saga again link down in the description below but they have done a whole slew of these i mean quite a few and people tend to have a wonderful experience with that hence why they made the list all right, next up we have Yosef Fari. Uh, I forget the company brand he puts it off of, but it's really him that's at it. He does a lot of these really indie, uh, you know, again, like a two-player card game style stuff, right? And it's always like one or two word titles, and it's always super artsy and super pretty, and people have had a wonderful time backing his stuff, and he's finding great success in it, and I think that's awesome. All right, next up, Synergic Games made the list as well. They did Harakiri, Blades of Honor. Again, they have not delivered that yet so i almost did put it but they've done a really good job with communication and talking through things and with community outreach and stuff like that and at the end of the day they were mentioned so i'll go and put that here if they come out with another kickstarter i'm sure people will be interested hopefully they are able to deliver harakiri first all right next up we have r d games again making very pretty games and giving people a wonderful experience while they back them so great to see them on this list as well now we also have underdog games they do a ton of these kind of like uh, kid friendly games I, I think they have two on kickstarter but they look beautiful and amazing and very pretty and i've heard wonderful things about them especially playing them as a family they look slightly educational even which is great to double dip like that have fun and learn Heck yes, why not? So that's great. So as you can see, like the numbers, the years are very prominent on there and stuff. So you're going to learn some stuff as you go through with that one. All right, next up we have Side Room Games. They do a lot of these really pretty games that just, uh, again, very small scale, which means that they're not affected by this, this turbulent time nearly as much. And they have a ton of people excited for it, which is great to see. Um, again, only $15. That's awesome. That's amazing. I love it. I think that's great. Great travel stuff. Next up, we have, uh, and again, this is this is rough. Uh, Lauta Pellet Fee? Fi? I don't know. I don't know. I, you, you guys are laughing right now. Agamonia, though, I had a blast. I know, I think Tom didn't like it because he played, uh, I guess, just one of the missions where you have to, like, move, you know, you're essentially trying to get a caravan through and you have to kind of work through it. I found that. I loved that. But then, I, you know, we played all the others as well really fun game played it with the family they all enjoyed it um it was very rpg like so was it just a dungeon crawl i think he just wanted to fight there's plenty of fighting too but there's a lot of exploring and solving puzzles and trying to get past locked gates and you know over obstacles and stuff like that it was a much different twist and feel to it and coupled with the beautiful art that's super unique art. It, it's a joy. I really did enjoy agamonia it was it was very nice um i don't know if putting moan in the name of your game title is smart but you know whatever it's fine flat out games again beautiful freaking games okay so there are euros that are like super dry right I, like i think the term beige is being thrown around a lot right like just super kind of ugly even and then there are these like okay so like plant stuff like that not for me but dear lord does that look pretty oh my goodness and again 11 thousand plus backers this did fantastic they are doing fantastic cloud games is making games people want and people want these beautiful games cheap games play well that's it that's it that's all there is all right next up we have battle systems just now getting into board games they've done terrain for, traditionally they did terrain for fallout wasteland warfare for instance so i did a video way back then using their stuff and they are now doing this core space stuff which people adore the fact that i mentioned this means that on my patreon on my discord there will be like five people freaking out in the comments right now tagging me oh you haven't played it blah, blah, blah. okay so that's really cool they're coming out with another one a fantasy based one instead of sci-fi which means it's going to do really well of course because it has a passionate uh fan base because it's a quality game that's unique and it has a unique look and feel to it and at the end of the day that's what you need in this kind of market all right next up we have axis moody now most people will know them for Senko Kushin, which 
games coming out in Q4 2022. Stay tuned for more information on that. Be sure to subscribe. I will be covering that in depth. But they have done several other campaigns, several uh, card games and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, actual like miniature stuff also. So they get a list here for delivering quality products. I got their their minis, for instance amazing their art and their previous campaigns again amazing so it's really great to see that uh they're just making quality 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 and they're doing that with their uh um next game too and i think that's that's wonderful to see that investment privateer press they do a ton of stuff uh their latest one actually i think was canceled they were trying to do a board game version of their riot quest but they have done plenty of other stuff and all of that tends to do quite well for them actually with thousands of backers and of course they do a lot of retail stuff as well but they definitely have that passionate niche following which means they're doing something right that's how that works all right next up we have ludic dragon games Oh my lord, if you wanted to see what passion is, look no further than Dungeon Universalists. Always talking to their their uh, their their backers. He the, the guy who runs this is fantastic. He's reached out to me. He's reached out to my viewers even. In fact, because this is in the video, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him in the comments below. Seriously, uh, he's just very passionate about his creation, about making this epic RPG board game that leans more RPG than board game, whereas a lot of the board games lead more board game than RPG. So it's unique and it's different. And he has essentially um, like physical stuff for all of it. So it's not even like in your head and stuff like that. It looks massive. If you want to devote a thousand plus hours of your life to something and dive deep into a, a, a game that was like some guy's like crazy vision, Dungeon Universalist is it. And that means, again, quality niche following that people love and adore it and i think that's so great perfectly what kickstarter is for all right next up we have limbo eternal war this is by limbo miniatures again reinvesting in their product always trying to put a quality of the product first and then improvements as well again one of the companies that reached out and asked hey your negative things have we solved that are we working on that did we fix this can we fix that Wonderful to see that sort of passion in your creation instead of just shotgunning it out and then moving on to the next one before you even deliver it and never looking back. No, they're investing in it and that's great. Next up, we have Reds and Games. They did Scarface most lately. Uh, that's delivering soon, I believe, and it looks great. Looks awesome. I actually saw this mentioned a lot with the Cyberpunk thing. People were like, hey, I'm actually just going to play Scarface. It actually looks a little bit better version of this. And honestly, I love the look of it. I'm huge, a huge fan of the movie The Untouchables. Like, I watch that yearly, okay? So I really, like, maybe multiple times a year. I love that movie, and I love the theme of it. I love that 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 time in America and, and the Chicago way and all that kind of stuff. It just, it looks wonderful. Um, so uh, definitely cool on that as well. And it looks like a beautiful product. It really does. It really does. Corvus Belly, they, again, very retail, but they do some of this Kickstarter stuff. And when they do it, people notice. They did this tag raid was their latest one, and it did very well. It has big, beautiful minis and a lot of gameplay. And honestly, pretty good bang for your buck, especially considering what it normally costs on retail. It's actually pretty darn good. Okay, now this next one, I'm going to have to cheat and actually look at the name to say because it, it's like some, it reminds me of like Warhammer 40k stuff. Officina Monastrum, Monastorum, whatever. Okay, so <laughs> they did the Hunter's AD. Again, some of my patrons are gaga over this. They have a lot of fun with it. It's very pretty very unique looking and you keep investing into it and that's awesome and then finally finally we have prometheus game labs with their micro dojo stuff that's been doing very well that people again are super happy with dear lord okay if i missed something let me know let us know in the comments below i'll be keeping a list in the description below along with all those other links and stuff like that of the uh uh ones that you guys add to i'll put them at the top of the list so people can see oh on top of this here's some other stuff what I took away from this is that there are so many great companies making fantastic games out there for you. So anytime you feel that there's too much negativity or anytime you feel like there, everybody is doing things that are bad, far, far from it. This is a wonderful industry full of passionate people making great games for happy customers. And this, this insanely big list with only a day's worth of response time 
proves that. You guys were instantly like, oh, I love this company. I love this company. This company did this for me. And the stories I have read have warmed my heart when it comes to the customer service and when it comes to the community outreach or doing what's right or taking a hit on something or or making sure that something's the right way, even when it wouldn't be the easiest way. And all of these wonderful stories you guys have shared have been so amazing and so uplifting that it, it's just wonderful to see. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff out there, guys. I'm going to go on and sign off now. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye, guys.